Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to work on installing this Harbor Freight adjustable tow bar. This is model number 94696. It has a 5,000 pound capacity. It's made by Hallmaster. Now it comes out of the box already pre-assembled. Looks like we will need to tighten the bolts as some of them are loose. And of course also on the mounting hardware. We'll get those uh, tightened up once we have those mounted to the car. If you'd seen any of my earlier videos, I bought that 88 CRX and it had these tow bar brackets already on it. So I'm going to mount those on my 90 Civic today. And we're going to get this tow bar mounted up, make sure the brackets here fit onto these. It looks like I'm going to have to drill an extra hole right here because of where the mounting position is on these two. It's on both the outer edges. And I'd already measured it up to one another. This hole will work. I'm gonna need to drill an extra hole right here. Here I took the brackets off of the tow bar. I'm gonna remove the hardware and see about getting it installed. So it looks like that one will fit perfectly on that side. Now what I'm gonna do, I got this one, obviously this outer bolt hole worked. The inner one will not with this particular bracket. So we're just going to kind of line it up, get it flat and leveled out. I'm going to mark where we want to drill. Let me see how much room we got there. Okay, right about there. I'm just going to mark where I'm going to start the drill. After you got the hole drilled, go ahead and test fit it. Of course, I want to make sure I used a large enough drill bit that would fit the bolt without having to enlarge it anymore. This one is made for metal, it even has the pilot point, which is why I used this. That when you push it down, it makes a little mark in there, which allows that pilot point to stay right on it. So it came out nice and clean. I just want to make sure these both fit. That one's good. Perfect where I drilled them. This is gonna mount just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up drilling the hole on the other side. And then we're gonna get the bumper removed and we're gonna test fit this on here. One small problem that I'm encountering is little plates which go on the back side before you put the nut on. This one does not fit precisely where it needs to be. So I'm gonna take my grinder and I'm just gonna grind some of that edge down so I can get this plate to fit behind this bolt also. So for my particular application with my brackets, I just grinded down a lot of that side. That way I can get this on there now. So it fits perfectly as well as this one. This one I had to do it in a little different shape. That way I can kind of match and get around the welds. I was able to have this one also lie flat once we get the mounting hardware through there. I think that just helps. It's like, it kind of serves like a large washer for the whole area and uh, distributes the load a little bit more evenly throughout the entire bracket. I think that's why it's good to have those on there. I had thought about putting just a, a larger washer and then maybe a lock washer, but ultimately I'm gonna stick with this method. And these, have, these are the nylocks, which have the nylon at the end of it, so it locks it on there. I'm also going to put a, a locking washer as well as the nylock, so that way these are going to stay on there. And you're not going to be removing these. You're going to remove this bracket, which attaches with uh, the slide pin and then the cotter pin at the end of it. Now my setup is easy with my bracket. I have to just remove the two bolts which attach the subframe to the actual frame of the car. And we're going to slide in the bracket. And just gotta get both of those started. What's also cool is that this particular setup has a third bolt which goes through here and it goes through the tow hook. So I will utilize that one also. And 
And the large nut on this side. That'll help hold it into place. And then I'm gonna go ahead and re-tighten up these two bolts and that bolt right there. And here's how my car looks after I have both of my brackets on. What I'm gonna do next is get these brackets actually installed. Now here's a look at that tow bar finished up. Make sure you follow the directions in terms of tightening up all these different bolts and the way it's supposed to be put together. It goes through all of it pretty in depth. It says you need to get it uh, test fitted to make sure you have everything tightened up before putting it on the vehicle. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take it off. We're right here where the quick releases are. Pull the little R clips out and then slide the pins out. And I'm gonna drive it up behind my truck and we're gonna line it up and get it on there. We're gonna go for a little test drive on this, see how it feels. And here I got mounted up to the truck. It's a little bit difficult trying to get this mounted up exactly with the truck, a little bit of adjustments back and forth. I think that'll get easier as I'm used to mounting this on here and lining it up with the truck. It'll be easier if I have someone to guide me and hold the, the tow hitch, well I'm sorry, hold the, the tow bar in place as I move the truck back and forth lining up the hitch. Feels real good after taking it for a spin. We're gonna go ahead and work on getting the safety chains installed now. For the safety chains, I went ahead and skipped over the Harbor Freight brand. I went to Lowe's, I picked up these Reese Tow Power. I imagine these will be uh, perfect because they're 5,000 pound tow rating, so there's not a chance of them snapping. They have the quick links. And I pulled one out and I was measuring it to where I wanted to, 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 to bolt up to my truck. And it looks like it's gonna fit perfectly. I'm actually going to cut this chain in half. We're gonna mount these onto these are the little U-hooks that were on the side of the tow bar. I went in and disconnected it. But now I'm gonna go ahead and get this chain cut in half and I'll show you exactly how I'm gonna mount my safety straps. Went ahead and used my grinder and cut that middle link, just put a notch into it so I can get both these straps off. And I have two individual chains. So that was super easy to get mounted there. And the other side has that quick link, which I am going to just put right here on my frame rail and go ahead and tighten it back up. Close the link off, that one's good to go. I'm not gonna tighten it all the way because I am gonna remove the tow bar. Well, I gotta take a small break. I got the front chains installed. We're gonna work on the back ones once this rain lets up. As you can see from the video, it looks like it pulled just fine. We didn't have any problems. Now, if you're looking at it now, it probably looks a little bit different than what it looked like in the towing video. I added these 3 eighths, 3 eighths inch thick steel beams across it to create more of an, an A effect. I wanted it to be a little bit more structurally sound in between each of the bars. Uh, I don't know if it's going to make a huge difference, but I imagine it, it cannot hurt it because these are tightened up here now. And these are essentially what stop the bar from, from moving. That's why it's an adjustable tow bar. Not every single mount is going to be exactly the same from car to car. So when those are on there, that's why you adjust these. And then once I found my position on those, that's when I added these two steel beams. They're not that expensive. If you see, this one has holes already. This used to be a beam that I had for an old Civic where I had a racing seat in there and I used it for one of the rails. This other one I went and picked up at Home Depot. It was $23 for a three foot long beam. 
I only need about 32 inches to complete that beam. The next test is going to be taking it to the track in three days. It will be a 140 mile round trip and I will have that as the last part of the video. Well, we made it out. The tow bar was a success. It's kind of a pain in the ass getting everything set up. It takes a little bit of time, but it's safe. And also I get to ride home in the truck, which is nice and air conditioned. That'll be it for the tow bar, guys. I used it for 150 miles round trip. I just got back from my track day and I didn't have any problems at all with it. It worked perfect. And when I was on the freeway, I was able to do about between 58 and 60 miles an hour. It says to not do more than 55, but that still felt pretty safe and I was just uh, cruising along and I didn't have any problems at all. Hope you guys liked the video. Stay tuned and we will talk to you next week.